Oh, welcome back to Business Insight. You just had um, the chairman of Dangote Group now, really now to, um, the announcement yesterday of um, the PMS uh, from the refinery and of course um, Nigerians um, lamenting since um, the NNPCL increased the pump price of um, petrol. Well, I have public affairs analyst Mustafa Ewinla joining me now for further discussions. Good morning to you, <laughs> Mustafa. Thank, thank you for having me, just. All right, this morning, you know, when, when it's uh, an issue of fuel, practically everyone, you know, gets the pinch. Everyone is affected. So Absolutely. I was discussing with um, colleagues uh, when I got to the office today. Uh, incidentally, the reports generally was like uh, the uh, increment had gone over 400, as in transport cost, which is one of um, the, um, you know, ripple effect, has gone up for way about um, four to 500%. Incidentally, uh, people who were commuting from the I uh, mainland uh, reports were like, as of last year, it was between um, 500, uh, 800 to get to Victoria Island. Sure, uh, today, yeah. the, the average cost is about 2,000 to 2,500 there. So, uh, with this latest uh, development, uh, did it come to you as a surprise? Uh, because by Monday, NNPC issued a statement saying that they are having financial issues and they are owing debt. And the next day, voila pump price has been increased. So, so what has happened and what we have continued to witness in the past uh, couple of months with our fuel crisis and generally with our downstream strength, I think is something that we, a lot of Nigerians were already anticipating already. The honest truth is what is happening to our oil and gas sector, for me, I call it a national show of shame. How so? Yes. For a country like Nigeria that happens to be one of the largest oil producing nations in the world, so we're going through this mess every other time, and we have seen what has finally happened yesterday. NNPC has taken up their price to 897 naira per liter. Mm. So that is just to tell us to, we need to, I think we need to brace up as citizens. Independent marketers will not sell for that price if they're getting from NNPC for that price. Mm. So I, I bought yesterday somewhere in a, in a filling session for 1,000 naira per liter. Hmm. And again, I just wonder what uh, uh, government, the federal government, needs, you know, is doing about this. I saw a video of uh, Mr. President speaking in China yesterday, and he was saying that um, Nigeria is the biggest economy in Africa. I think Mr. President is uh, is not properly informed. Nigeria used to be the biggest economy in Africa. Now we have lost that position, that glorious position, to a country like South Africa. Hmm. Our current GDP right now is way lower than the GDP of South Africa. And these are because of the economic issues and the policies that we keep churning out as a country. South Africa right now has the biggest economy in Africa. And they hmm. didn't get that by increasing pump price. They didn't get that by increasing pump price. Hmm. South Africa has a GDP of over 373 billion US dollars, followed by Egypt, followed by Algeria. And these are countries that are smaller than us in population. As a country, instead of progressing, I think we are rather ret retrogressing. Hmm. It is very sad, very, very sad, because whatever we are doing, we have been talking about inflation since the beginning of this year. Mm -hmm. What has just happened with NNPC now increasing the pump price, it just tells, further tells us that inflation is even going to go deeper. Nigeria has become the largest, the largest debtor in Africa, number one debtor in Africa. Our public, our public debt and our domestic debt right now is put to about 91 billion US dollars. Mm. If you convert that to Naira, that's about 121 trillion Naira. So again, I think that this is not a good step for NNPC. Mm. Well, we're happy for people like Dangote that is trying to say, let us see how we can salvage this situation. Mm. If Dangote's refinery has a capacity of 650,000 barrels per day, if he starts to distribute uh, petrol to, you know, uh, petroleum companies like the oil and gas and the filling stations. I think the, the price from Dangote is going to be, you know, far, far reduced. Do you think so? Because I, I just have to put in there because yes. uh, uh, he had um, a press briefing yesterday yes. and um, incidentally, uh, he was probed uh, further concerning um, the price. Uh, what he said was not, I don't know, in my head, I don't know if that's um, the... Uh, 
Uhuru that we are uh, expecting because he's saying that yeah. um, it has to be determined, you know, by the Federal Executive Council, yes. NFC. You know the bottlenecks and everything that happens in Nigeria. In my head, I, I was thinking since uh, he is um, a private company, then he should just go with the forces of the mint and supply. Why do we still need to have government's intervention in all of this? Because at the end of the day, politicking might even come to play. So clearly, one of, so clearly, some of the things affecting us as a country, some of our policies, and I've said it, and we cannot be playing politics with issues like our petroleum sector. Mm. Because everything we do as a country, we depend so much on petrol. Mm. For you to run your domestic uh, errands, for you to run your organization, for manufacturers, for agriculture, uh, I mean, agricultural farmers, they need petrol to run. You know, so, uh, so, so it's going to be very difficult for Dangote to you know, come up with his own price for petrol. Because whether you like it or not, it's still under the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and NNPC is still more like the governing body that governs whatever happens in that sector. Because right now, he is actually competing with NNPC. Huh? Yes, he's competing with NNPC, but again, a lot of times, <laughs> NNPC, NNPC he still needs to get some certain uh, consent from NNPC, because NNPC is more like the regulatory body in that sector. In terms in of the, price control. In terms of price control, yes. And so, and whatever it is, whatever it is, I just think that there needs to be some sort of, you know, uh, you know, soft landing for this man. Still, this man has invested so much he in the refinery. He has, undoubtedly, he has invested so much. At the point, he was getting so frustrated. But my issue right now would be that, uh, do you foresee a fair deal? Do you foresee a situation where Nigerians can actually just... Uh, go to bed with both eyes closed in terms of um, the cost of fuel because at the end of the, the day most nigerians don't trust the policies of government and they feel that if um, the government has to bring uh, its own input in terms of the nnpcl federal executive council and dangote that um, it might just be business as usual so so the thing is i i feel i feel that i feel that um dangote is going to be given a fair a fair deal in terms of the pricing but I, my biggest fear is I don't, I'm not sure the pricing will be lower than that of NNPC. If that, but naturally, if Dangote is you know refining his crude oil, yeah, it should naturally be lower than. So if, NNPC. if Dangote is refining at a lower cost yes. compared to what the NNPCL yes. is putting out there, yes. so shouldn't he be selling at um, a cost that will not be um, as high as par with the, the NNPC? NNPC Just yes. So and then the Nigerians have been mm, looking forward to yes. this breakthrough, as it were. So naturally, that's supposed to be that's supposed to be the model. Yes. Because NNPC right now ex exports their crude oil to go mm -hmm. refine right now. Mm -hmm. Because now in Nigeria we only have less than nine or ten refineries. The four that the government has, the Potakot, the Moribond. The Mori, uh, Moribond. I saw a video of the NNPC boss Meli Kiari saying that Potakot refinery will start production in <laughs> August. And the question that people were asking yesterday was that, which <laughs> August? Are we already in September, <laughs> and production has not started. Mm -hmm. So are you talking about August is 2025 or 2026? Mm -hmm. But this because definitely not this August anymore, because this is mm -hmm. a new month already. So, so I feel that, uh, naturally, the price from Dangote should be way cheaper than the price from NNPC. Because so Dangote refinery is a local refinery, here and is not doing a lot of exportations anymore. So everything is going to be done locally here. So if we can get a price of say 500, 600 uh, naira yeah. per liter from Dangote, I think that would really do a lot of Nigerians a lot of good. Because I tell you what is going to happen in the next coming month. If you, you need to go around Lagos now and see the queue everywhere, the queue is really crazy. It is really And alarming. my biggest worry is the, the kind of impediment that yeah. queue is causing on the road. Yes. I was practically, yesterday I spent from Aja to VGC, I spent almost two hours just to get from Aja to VGC because mm. of the filling station by the roadside by VGC selling for. Mm. So, so people are wasting productive hours on the road because of mm. people, people trying to buy for. Okay. And so I think something needs to be done about that. So, I, so that's mm. where we need our the last mile officials and a lot of you know, you know, traffic waters to come okay. to our rescue. These guys are doing their own business. The local independent, the marketers or the filling stations are doing their own business. Mm. While we going about our own businesses are held up in traffic mm. because they're trying to do their own business. It's wrong. Okay. It's wrong. So, so again, so I, we just hope that we, in the next coming, coming weeks, mm. we are able to see something more holistic from the federal government. The president of this country is the minister of petroleum, and I think that he needs to rise up to this occasion. Speaking of rising up to the occasion, let's still talk about what's been happening with the NNPC because yes. we are, you will agree with me that it has a whole lot to do with um, the current situation that we are, we are facing. You know, on Anuga, 
has been in the news since yesterday, the presidential spokesman, and he was saying that the NNPC cannot continue paying, you know, he, he called it petrol price differential, in as much as uh, people are still saying that um, the federal government is still paying subsidy. There's been a whole lot of um, nomenclature uh, as regards that. You know, we were told that uh, landing cost is about 1,200 naira. So the difference uh, between that 800 and uh, the, 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 the pound price and all yeah, is it, what yeah. uh, the, the NNPC or the federal government is paying. You know, but should we take all of this as it is or take with a pinch of salt? Because over time, the NNPC will come out and say that um, they don't have issues, they're having logistics problems, only for them to come out just like that on Tuesday and said that they have some debt. And now the uh, presidential spokesman is saying that uh, if they continue like that, you know, the NNPC will go bankrupt. So should there really be a renewed call for further unbundling of the NNPCL as it is right now? Because... Over the years, it's been one issue to the other. To the other. If it's not one thing, it's the other. So for me, I think generally, NNPC as a, as a federal government arm or a company that for me, organization, I think they need to, they suppose there's need for the government to look in, into that sector properly. There's a lot of irregularity in NNPC, and I've said it over time. It is, and I think that the, the president needs to intervene mm -hmm. timely. NNPC, for me, are the key stakeholders in our petroleum industry. Okay. And they've, they've, they've been too many back and forth. Every other time we see monies allocated for turnaround maintenance yes. of our local refineries, yeah. the one in Cardinal, and we don't get to see anything happening. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of irregularity in that sector. And I think that the government, the federal government needs to intervene quickly. Yeah. I'm not particularly happy with their performance in the past couple of years. In fact, particularly since, since, uh, since when FWEB subsidy was removed in quotes. Mm. We have seen that we are still Nigerians. The whole idea of fuel subsidy was for Nigerians not to not to buy not to buy fuel at a very high cost. And True. look at how much we are buying it now. Mm -hmm. the, the, the other time so we had the, the, the other time we had Occupy Nigeria when fuel subsidy was removed. The president then I think good luck Jonathan also had to bring back subsidy just to cushion the effect to reduce the effect of the, the, the subsidy on Nigerians. But now so subsidy has been removed. We are mm. still buying cost now at the point at the cost of one thousand naira per liter. Mm. And that's why the NLC right now they are angry because one I was of going the to say that because yes. they are demanding immediate reversal. Yes, you now know, because NLC, the NLC leader was telling the president, give us two hundred and fifty thousand naira minimum wage, mm. and we will be fine. But the president told them that if you give them two hundred fifty thousand naira minimum wage, mm. that means four price will go to one thousand five hundred naira <laughs> per liter. But now the president so is like the president tricks them. <laughs> so now the president gave them seventy thousand naira minimum wage. Which has not even start, which is not even implemented yet, because mm. I, because I, I'm still yet to see those who have started receiving that as of, as of now. Mm. So seven thousand naira minimum wage, and no, the, the whole idea was that the four pump, the pump pipe will reduce, yes, or it will not go up. But yes, now the but pump now, pipe has gone up, yes. and the two hundred fifty. But at the end of the day, because at the end of the day, there will be more inflation. The food be, prices have increased over time by forty percent. Yes. You know, so I, I'm wondering what will be the the next effect of it, that because. As it is, once fuel price just goes up, goes you know, every, practically everything, everything follows. So yeah, fair, yeah, I don't yeah. know if we'll be able to even afford food anymore. No, I've said it. I said it one time. I said food has become luxury now. So if you're able to eat three square meals now, three, you're, you're, you're a rich man. It has become luxury. So people have decided to cut down their eating pattern to like maybe, maybe yeah. morning, they skip afternoon and they do it night. That's the honest truth. Because you can imagine if you have to go to the, to the market to buy a tuba of yam now, it's over 10,000 naira per for a tuba of yam. So it's crazy. So that's why. The hardship and the, the kind of hardship we keep, in, 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 you know, in, 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 we keep putting Nigerians through, for me, is getting out of it. And that's why we were saying, we were telling Nigerians a few months ago not to protest. And this is, and this is one of the issues, this is one of their demands. Now it has happened, and I, so I wonder why, I wonder how we're going to prevent them from coming out to protest now, because this is very, very unbearable, very, very unbearable. The cost of oil needs to come, I don't know how, I, I don't know what, what, Kind of mathematics NNPC did for them to come up, even if you are in debt, increasing the pump price for fuel that will affect every common man in this country mm. is not the way out. Mm. There are other ways of solving your debt. We keep that to, making so, Nigerians pay without, making, without making Nigerians, you know, pay the price for the debt mm. that they are owing. When Nigerians there, when you borrowed money, <laughs> we're not there. I mean, we're not in that meeting. So for you to come up with that reason, because the NNPC is in debt, we need to increase the pump price. You are further you are, you are spreading the hardship across the board, and the ripple effect of that is going to be very, very bad. So, so do you really think 
they are really being transparent enough because yes. if you follow the border language over time, you know, yes. the fuel um, uh, scarcity that have been on months on end and uh, the issues of um, logistics, you know, yeah. next thing now uh, we'll sort it out before the end of the month, you know, we don't have um, issues. Next thing they came out to say that um, they have debts of this amount. The next day, you know, uh, they are increasing pump price just like that without, I don't know how they arrived at such figures. Yes. I don't know if Nigerians were really carried along. I don't know if there was some sort of uh, stakeholders, you know, meet, meeting. stakeholders meeting or something. You know, yeah. do you, how transfer, or not, not transfer, how transparent really has, uh, you know, the government been in terms of uh, this issue of um, fuel pricing, you know, fuel cost and then even fuel supply? So for, me, I, so, so for me, I don't think that the government has been transparent enough in, uh, as in, at the point of taking a lot of all these mm. policies, any policy that is not people oriented is is not is not is not going to see the light of the day. As a government, one of the key things you must consider when making any policy is, is this policy people oriented. Is it going to solve the problems of the masses? Is mm. it going to solve the hardship that the people are currently facing? Yeah. If that pro if that policy is rather going to bring more hardship, then there's no point for that policy because. The government is all about the people, and if the people are not are saying that no, this hardship is too much. I saw a video of one lady on online mm -hmm. yesterday raining courses on the president. Yes, we are not saying that that's the way to go about it, but all, all we're trying to say is that people are people are angry, people are hungry, and when some when people, when somebody is hungry, they will be they'll, they'll, there's naturally the anger will come will come from the, from such person. So I think mm -hmm. that. Generally, the, the, the kind of policies we are churning out as a government needs to be rejigged. Mm. As, a, as a government, policies on petroleum product is a very vital policy that stakeholders so, should be consulted. So, yeah, yeah. By policies again, sorry, I'm brought in. By policies yes. again, do you think uh, we should further streamline the downstream sector to the extent yes. where there will be more active players and competition would actually play out? And at the end of the day, the, the forces of demand and supply would hold sway, and maybe just somehow, you know, the the pump price just might fall because right now everyone has been hoping or and relying on Dangote, you know, rolling out um, his uh, product, uh, which will start. He said that maybe in the next 48 hours or so. But then, don't you think if we have act more active players or so, because the other day now, the NNPC was talking about uh, getting them um, operators to handle the worry and the Kajuna refinery. In your opinion, just how far can all of this go? So I think that, so I think that it is very important to say that Dangote refinery is not the first in, uh, individual refinery in Nigeria. Mm. We have well over six refineries across, sure, across the country. Mm. We have the Watersmith refinery in Imo State that's about, that has about 5,000 barrels per day capacity. Mm. We have the OPAC refinery in Delta that has about 1,000 barrels per day mm. capacity. We have the Edo refinery. So there's a lot of... But the thing, but I, but I feel that over time, the, the activities of these refineries mm. have been scuffled. They have been... They, they, they are, they are, there's too many regulatory orders well, that is not problem. allowing them mm. to function properly. True. And, and I feel that if such people are having a lot of challenges, after the Dangoto refinery that has 650,000 mm. barrels per day capacity, the Portacos refinery is the, best, is the next big refinery Bexley, that has yeah. about 150,000 barrels per day capacity, but it's not functional. Yeah. So, so, so I think that the government needs to help these local refiners, the, the, the ones I've just mentioned, the yeah. people like Dangota and all that, they need to help them, give them a soft landing to make, if all these refineries are working effectively, there's going to be enough supply to go around. And the issue of, I, I also another critical matter is also allowing other players to come into the i mean there, should, there shouldn't be a monopoly mm -hmm. there should be as much as we should, if we should have as much as uh, if, we, if we if we have 100 people showing uh, you know applying for yes. to, to have refineries they should give them you know make make it easy for them to come in mm -hmm. and the, i mean when we when we when we scuffle uh, activities of the current refinery owners that they, they're also going to discourage what? prospective uh, prospective refinery owners who want to come into that sector too mm -hmm. and that's what's playing at now Okay. And that's why we see. That's why we keep seeing companies leaving the country because mm. because of all these regulatory orders and all these hassles. Right. Okay, so uh, last word now for um, Nigerians, commuters. Yes. What would your last word be in a few seconds? So well, I think my last word is going to be for Nigerians. I think we should, as a country, as a people, we need to brace up. Mm. Again, we need to continue to hold our leaders accountable. 
policies like this will, re will consume us as the country and we must not allow it to happen. All right. Yes. So we just have to, uh, you know, stand together uh, as one country, as one people, speak together as one voice and uh, hold government to account, as um, Mustafa has said, and um, just hopefully let uh, the government agencies be as transparent as possible so they don't just come up with policies every now and then. Nigerians will now continue to pay the, the, the price for all of them. This, uh, ineptitude as it were. I must say a very big thank you to uh, Musa Faiwila, um, Public Affairs Analyst. So that's the size of the show for today. And many thanks uh, to all of you who have sat back to watch. My name is Justin Academy. See you again next time. Bye for now.